We are at Rebel, and today we are talking about how to make the perfect tartare because tartare can be a little scary for people. They say, oh, it's something I can't make at home. But what are the basic things people need to know about what tartare is? Tartare is now known as a uh, raw beef dish. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, we're looking at a uh, raw cut, top round, or sirloin, and uh, a nice dice on it, and uh, seasoned with a lot of your classical accoutrements, shallots, capers, uh, a raw egg yolk, parsley. Um, but historically speaking, tartare came from the idea of, uh, of a steak, uh, steak tarta, and tarta was uh, the sauce that would go along with it. Mm. And so it was uh, sort of like a mayonnaise-based uh, sauce, hard-boiled eggs, olive oil, uh, actually neutral oil then. Um, and it's like something that goes back to like Escoffier time. And it's sort of along the lines, the tartare sauce became steak at tartare and then tartare sort of lost its sort of formality of what it originally was and just like evolved into what it is now. We just started calling it an Americanized, that's tartare. Tartare. <laughs> Cut it that way, it's a tartare. Fish, beef, it's all good, tartare. Um, but you think tartar sauce and you think of the capers, you think of like this mayonnaise base and it's something that we still have to this day, you know, so. You know, tartar sauce became tartare, and then all of a sudden it became diced meat. And so for people who look at tartare and they say, okay, but like, I'm a little afraid of the raw meat. You know, why does tartare work so well? And why in this context does raw meat work well? Which is something that some people tend to shy away from. I think the fear is that a lot of people don't know their sources. So, I mean, one of the things that can make a tartare so easy to make is knowing your butcher, knowing where the beef is coming from, or the lamb, or the fish. And when you know that you have a high quality product and you trust the person that's providing it with you, then it's like, okay, cool, I'm in good hands. I have something great here and I can't mess it up. The flavor's over there and then it's a matter of just highlighting those flavors and, and bringing it to the table and enjoying it. Right, and you say it's not easy to mess up, but it's almost in some ways harder because the amount of sauce, what you're putting True. on it, yeah. you know, you really have to get those proportions right. So how do you know you know, what to put in and how much to taste and what are the types of tricks and tips that you use when well, making sauce? I, I think that one thing to always remember is that you can always add but you can't take away. Right. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of tasting gradually, you know, as you're adding these ingredients, as you're adding the salt, as you're adding the shallots, as you're adding the vinegar, you're adding little by little. It's not just dump it in, mix it up, put it on the plate, you know. You taste constantly. I think acidity is a big play, yeah. you know. This is the thing that sort of makes you almost like, you know, makes your your, your mouth pucker a little bit um, because we're looking at something that's usually very fatty you know it's rich and so you want that acidity to really balance it out um, for me you know the lamb tartare that we're doing here at Rebel is uh, it, it's sort of like a play on your traditional tartare but it's also you know tipping the hat to the south of France and the, to the Pyrenees region where the Pyrenees have been renowned for the lamb for many years. That with, you know, the olives from the south of France, you know, it sort of ties into that region, sort of tells that story. Well, will you show us the steps to Rebel's lamb tartare? I would love to. So now we're back in the Rebel kitchen about to do the lamb tartare. To begin, you know, you want to find yourself a, uh, a nice butcher, somebody who's going to provide you with a great piece of lamb. Uh, we work with the top round over here at the restaurant. Uh, it's lean, it's easy to work with. Uh, after you get it clean, which the butcher would probably be happy to do for you, uh, one of the tricks that we use is we actually put it into the freezer just for a little bit of time to sort of firm it up so that when we cut into it, we have nice, sharp, clean cuts, and then we can get a, a nice tartare dice. You start with, you know, 10 minutes, feel it. If you feel like the outside is firmed up, you know, it's also important to have a very sharp knife. Uh, so those will be the two things that will really help you to sort of get through this. Uh, so once you have that texture and you can feel a little bit, you know, just use the length of the blade to, to really cut it. I'd say like a square centimeter. It doesn't look like a gigantic chunk, but it's not something that's really, really minced either. So usually you usually want to do a plank sort of like of this size. Once you have that there, you flip it over onto its other side and you cut it the same sort of width. After that, you rotate it and then you just cut it into your cubes. And voila, it's like a mini die. The final product, it's going to be looking something like this. You're going to have this wonderful, nice little dice. It looks like nice little squares. So we start off here with the lamb. Begin with salt. Remember that you can always add, but you can't take away. So little by little, you're going to add some shallots, espalette pepper, which is going to give that little bit of heat, and a couple cracks of pepper. Continuing on with your olive oil. And here you begin to mix around. This will be the base. Go with a little bit of uh, 
olives here. Now, next thing that you're gonna go on with is the green chickpeas. You have this wonderful green against the red. You know, it really sort of makes things, it looks, looks really bright. If you can't find chickpeas, because it can be hard to come by, fava beans are also a great substitute for that, and those are pretty common. Now we begin to sort of impart some of the acidity into that. Now, we use several different types of acidity for different reasons. Lemon to have some of that sharpness, that pucker. So you can get a nice little squeeze in there. Orange to give a little bit more acidity, but give it a little bit of sweetness. To sort of play off of that gaminess. Then we have a little Cabernet Sauvignon vinegar. And so since you're adding three different types of acidity within this, you know, you wanna make sure that you're not putting in too much. You wanna go almost a little bit more acidic than you would think is, is necessary, because at the very end, we're gonna go tie in the classic raw egg into that. And now the egg yolk here is gonna provide that sort of roundness that's gonna just sort of round it out. And this you wanna put in at the very end. Doesn't take much, just enough to give everything a nice coating. The last little thing to tie it on, we here, is a little bit of yogurt. We're gonna hide it on the bottom of the plate, just a dollop right in the center. You don't want the yogurt to be part of the entire experience of the tartare. You want it to be sort of like a little surprise. So, a very simple yogurt, kinda tangy, and now we're just gonna take our tartare and we're gonna hide the yogurt. There you go, you see all the colors. So the last thing that we're gonna do and add here, now to the tartare that's been finished, is a little bit more texture. And here we have crispy shallots. We've sliced shallots on a mandolin, put them into a pot with cold oil and brought it up and we let it cook nice and slowly till all the sugars begin to caramelize. It gives it a nice crispy texture. It also allows the sugars of the shallots to really sort of add something else to it. Season it with salt just as it comes out and it's still hot. So it's sweet and salty and crunchy, giving the last little bit of texture. The lamb tartare at Rebel.